right, uh, 1.6a. We're going to do some absolute value equations, and then 1.6b will be inequalities. So I want to talk to you about uh, algebra for a minute. Absolute value equations when we get to here. Um, so my son who's in fifth grade, he does algebra. Like, he doesn't know he's doing algebra. It doesn't look like algebra, but it is algebra. It's stuff like this. You don't have to write this down. Um, he might have a problem that says something plus 7 equals 10. He's doing algebra. You know, instead of an x being there, he's, you know, he's finding out. And what would the answer be? 3. A number plus 7 equals 10, and he gets 3. Or if you did something times 4 is 20. Okay, that's a little bit harder for him. He has to kind of think backwards from his multiplication tables. It's before he learned how to divide. Because we would, if we had this problem, we would divide by 4. But you think something times 4 is 20, and that would be 5. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to do this today. The absolute value of something equals 7. And what would that answer be there? Oh, yes, there are two answers. I don't know if you've ever done equations with two answers before, but in this case, inside this box, there are two answers, really. It could be 7 or negative 7. Okay, and that's how we're going to treat these when we go to solve them. So basically, we're going to have something that looks like this. And you can write this down now. If the absolute value of x is equal to a, and a is a real number, then what we can say is that x could be a, or x could be the opposite of a, which would be negative a. OK? So I'll show you just a basic generic one that should make sense to you. So if you have the absolute value of x equals 5, then there's two answers for x. x is 5 or negative 5. And that makes sense. Plug them in. See if they work. The absolute value of 5 is 5, and the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. You know, absolute value is just it's the distance from 0. So if I tell you go 5, and you're on a number line, and I say go a distance of 5, you can either go to positive 5 or to negative 5. And that's why they both work. And then if we were going to graph our answer, answers, sorry, you would put a dot at negative 5 and at positive 5, and you would leave it. There's nothing in between. There's nothing on the outside. It's not an inequality. It's equal to negative 5 or 5, and that's it. Those are your two answers. OK, are they going to be that easy, though? Of course not. No way. I know. Wouldn't that be nice? No. Um, so we're going to do two types of problems. We're going to do some simple ones, and then we're going to do some complex ones. So let's start with some simple solving uh, absolute value equations. So let's do number one. Do the absolute value of 2x minus 1 is equal to 5. Okay, <clears throat> now it's not just simply x inside anymore. It's 2x minus 1, but I need to find out what x is. So this is, what I, this is how I'm going to look at this. This stuff inside of the absolute value, you kind of cover it up a little bit. That stuff could be 5, or it could be what? Negative 5. Yeah, the stuff on the inside, that whole thing can be 5, and then it would work. Or the whole thing could be negative 5, and it would work. Okay? So what you do is you set yourself two equations to solve now. Yeah, it's like two problems in one. You're welcome. And then go ahead and add 1. Divide by 2. Oops. So x is 3. That's one answer. Or add 1 over here. 2x is negative 4. x is negative 2. Put an or between there, because you can't be 3 and negative 2 at the same time. But you can have an answer of 3 or negative 2. And if you don't believe me, plug it back in and do it into the original equation, and it, they both will work. OK? All right. Feeling pretty good? Did you do these in Algebra 1? Anyone remember? Yeah? Mm hmm You did. Maybe you don't remember. All right, number 2. OK, now we're going to do one. There's going to be a bunch of stuff. Stuff sitting there around the absolute value. Let's do 3 times the absolute value of x plus 2 
minus 1 equals 8. Now, I'd like to tell you what people do wrong here. I'd like to tell you so that you won't do it. First thing people do wrong is they try to take that 3 and multiply it inside. You can't. The absolute value, those are walls. You cannot go into them, okay? The other thing that they'll do is they'll take this entire thing on the left and set it equal to 8 and equal to negative 8. That's not true either. The absolute value is set equal to the plus or minus, but not all the other stuff around it. So the first thing you have to do is you need to get all of that other stuff out of there. So we're going to start by adding 1 and getting that over to the other side. We're trying to isolate our absolute value, get the absolute value by itself. So you add 1. 3 times x plus 2 equals 9. <coughs> Excuse me. Do not distribute that 3 in there. Let's divide both sides by 3. Absolute value of x plus 2 is equal to 3. And now we're ready to set up our two equations. Our absolute value equals 3. That means this stuff in here, this x plus 2, can equal 3 or x plus 2 equals negative 3. Okay? Subtract 1, or I'm sorry, subtract 2 and get 1. And subtract 2 and get negative 5. And those are your answers. But every year I'll have someone who will start this by going 8 and negative 8, and that's wrong. It's only the absolute value when you do that. Okay. Alright, I have two more of these, and then we'll get to the harder, more complex ones. Yeah? I divided everything by 3 by 3. Okay. So the 3 is reduced there, and then 9 divided by 3 is that 3. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you for asking. Number 3. 5 minus 2 times x plus 9 equals negative 5. Um, write that down. For this one, a lot of people want to subtract 5 minus 2, and you can't. This is not 5 minus 2. This is 5 minus 2 times that stuff, okay? So the first thing you, do, you need to do is you need to get rid of this 5 right here. We're going to go ahead and subtract it over to the other side. And we get negative 2, absolute value of x plus 9 is equal to negative 10. Okay. Now, do you see where we're going next? Yes, we're going to divide both sides by negative 2 to get x plus 9 equals 5, and then set up your two equations to solve. So the stuff in here, this x plus 9, it can equal 5, or x plus 9 can equal negative 5. Subtract 9, you get negative 4. Subtract 9, you get negative 14. And if, you know, if you want to check your answers, you can. I would probably wait till like a test or quiz to maybe if I was, if I had enough time, I'd go back and check them. But, you know, I'm a little extra like that. All right, number four. Uh, ooh, this one. I, I get people on this one. and It's fun. It really is just to, like, get you. And then you get so mad. Absolute value of 2x plus 1 is equal to negative 13. Okay, you're going along, you're doing the problems, you're setting this equal to 13 and negative 13, you're doing it, you're doing it wrong. Okay, you need to stop <laughs> and look at the problem. Do you see it? Does anyone see it? Can an absolute value equal negative 13? No, but you're so used to, oh, I'm going to make this stuff equal to negative 13 and, po you know, you just kind of do the steps instead of thinking. And so if this is an absolute value, equal a negative number, you stop and you don't do anything to it and you say no solutions or no solution either way. And that's it. And you like those when you see them. When you don't see them, you get mad at me. And I, I love to put that on a quiz, by the way. I do. I get a lot of people. All right. Okay, let's move on to part B. Part B is more complex um, absolute value equations. We're going to actually have variables on both sides of the equation, and it makes it very, well, not very difficult. It makes something weird happen. Variables on two sides. 
variables on two sides. Okay, with these problems, what happens is at the end, you have to check your solutions. Okay, I know you don't want to. I know you're like, no, I'm good. I think I got it right. I'm good with that. No, the reason why you have to check your answers here is because sometimes they won't work. And it's not that you did anything wrong. Okay, you did everything right. It's just at the end, the answers that you get don't work in the original equation. And they're special. They're called extraneous. Extraneous solutions. These are answers that do not work, okay? Now, you could do the whole problem wrong and your answers aren't going to work because you did something wrong. You solved it wrong. You plug them back in. They don't work. You must have done something wrong. With these, you've done nothing wrong, okay? They're just extra answers. They're extraneous. They don't work. They're outside of the, they're, they're just weird. All right, so let's do some. Here we go. I'll show you what they look like. Number five. Uh, let's say we have the absolute value of 2x plus 3, and that's equal to 3x plus 2. The absolute value of 2x plus 3 equals 3x plus 2. Okay, see how there's variables on both sides of the equation here? The other time it was just a number on this side. They're going to be done the same way. You're going to set this 2x plus 3 equal to 3x plus 2. Okay. Or you can set 2x plus 3 equal to the opposite of 3x plus 2. And what's the opposite of 3x plus 2? Negative 3x minus 2. Perfect. You want to take the opposite of both. Okay. And now you have two, so two problems to solve, or you know, two parts of the problem. Ew, that's gross. There we go. All right, so let's start over here. Let's subtract 2x to the other side and then subtract two. So I get that x is one, that's one of my answers, yay. And do it again, add the three x over here, five x plus three is negative two, subtract three, hopefully you're getting really good at solving equations, and x equals negative one. Okay, now check your answers, you have to, and you're gonna check them in the original equation. The, very, the one the book will give you. You're going to check it in that one. So plug in 1 for this one. We get 2 times 1 plus 3, the absolute value, and that's supposed to equal 3 times 1 plus 2. Does it? Let's see. Absolute value of 5 equals 5. Yes, that is true. This one works. Yay. Now check this one. Plug in negative 1. 2 times negative 1 plus 3, absolute value of all that, is equal to 3 times negative 1 plus 2. Okay, over here I get negative 2 plus 3 is 1. The absolute value of 1 equals negative 1. Mm. That's not quite true, is it? The absolute value of 1 is actually equal to 1. Does 1 equal negative 1? No. This one is no good, okay? There's only one answer that works. This one is called extraneous. I don't need you to write that down like on your paper, extraneous. I do wanna see that you tried to solve it and then you checked it and crossed it out, okay? All right, let's do one more of those just so that we feel a little bit more comfortable. Last one and you're gonna get some time today to do your homework class. Um, let's do, let's do this one. 3x plus 2, absolute value, equals 4x plus 5. Do you want to try it or you're not quite ready? You ready? Want me to do it? I can do it. I don't care. And I get paid either way, so it really doesn't matter to me. A lot of money, too. I make a lot of money. Like, it's crazy. I just I shop every day because I have so much money to spend. All right, let's do it. Two equations to solve here. I have 3x plus 2. Oh, I was filming that. Oops. <laughs> Equals 4x plus 5. And then the other side is 3x plus 2 is the opposite of 4x plus 5, which would be negative 4x minus 5. All right. 
right, you should be pretty good at these by now. We've done so many of them. Subtract 3x to the other side. Subtract 5. Okay, x is negative 3. Try this side. I'm going to add 4x over. 7x plus 2 is negative 5. Subtract 2. x is negative 1. All right, let's check them. Ooh, can I show you a shortcut on checking them? I'll show you a shortcut. Um, if you just check this side, the one that's not in the absolute value, if you just check that side and you get a negative, you know it's wrong for sure because an absolute value cannot equal a negative. So if I plug negative 3 into this side, I get negative 12 plus 5 is negative 7. So I get the absolute value equals negative 7. That's not going to work. Okay, it's a shortcut. I didn't plug it into this side. I plugged it into that side, saw that it was going to be absolute value equals negative. I know that that is not a solution. Okay, it's a little shortcut. If you want to use it, you can. Uh, now let's try negative 1. We have 3 times negative 1 plus 2 equals 4 times negative 1 plus 5. Oh, wait, that's a 2. Okay, got it. All right, so we get negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, absolute value, and that's supposed to equal negative 4 plus 5, which is 1, and yes, it does. This one checks. My answer is, wow, that's really messy. X is negative 1. One answer. Sometimes both of them work. So not all the time where one will, one won't. A lot of times, though, one will, one won't. Okay?